Belter, and we are ready for Monaco against Arsenal. Wes, uh, I know that we've got loads of great matches on show today, but I think this was one you specifically were really looking forward to. Yeah, I mean, you look at the caliber of players that are on show, I know we alluded to with obviously uh, Monaco being uh, uh, defending champions, um, but you look at the year that Ozmakabar had last year, um, winning eFootball Pro, uh, winning the 1v1 title in London. And he's, for me, the best player on the planet, and to have, you know, two very, very very capable players in Lotfi and obviously debuting uh, Kili Zhu. That chemistry is already built there. They've known each other for a while. They're great players. You look at the Arsenal team they've put together, though. You've got Alex GRD, former semi-finalist with Nantes. You've got uh, Christopher, who, you know, to the end of last season with Boa Vista, showed some real quality. Um, and then performing in the in the Pez League World Finals was semi-finalist, only got knocked out by his Maka Bio. Uh, and then to top that off, you've got Venom, who is a bundle of energy, a bundle of emotion and will probably be the emotional heartbeat of this team. You've got, it, there's so many elements to this game that I can't pick a winner. Tactically, what do you think as well? What, what do you think the, the main plans are going to be from both of the sides? Well, I think you look at Arsenal, they've got loaded with pace. You've got Aubameyang, you've got Lacazette, you've got Nicola Pepe. You've also got the creative uh, experience of Meza Ozil. Um, on Monaco's side, you're looking at just, they're more of a sum of their parts type of team. Like they, they will just look at their, their players they've got. They've got Onyakuru, who is a massive, uh, pacey player. You've got uh, Wissam Ben Yedda, who's just come into the team as well. There's players there that they can utilise. You've got the experience of Cesc Fabregas. There's loads of different elements. It just depends on what they go with on, on these uh, game plans. For all I know, they could have seen something completely different and have chucked that in in a completely different way. As you look there, they've got uh, Arsenal, have got Willock, Maitland-Niles. They're looking at the youth. Um, if you look at their bench as well, they've got Saka, who's also a well-used player uh, in regards to uh, you know, uh, balancing of, of stats. So it's going to be a, a fascinating encounter. You've also got the experience of uh, Gelson Martins on the side of Monaco. There's a lot of weaponry there. And, you know, like I say, if it's, if it's dictated to by Cesc Fabregas, then I think we're in for a world of, uh, a world of good play here. Well, Weza will be providing the analysis. Now it's over to your match commentator, Harry Channon. Thank you very much, Mark. Match number three of the opening set of fixtures in the eFootball Pro 2020 season. And this one should be a cracker. I know we've said that about every single match <laughs> that we've seen so far today, but this one really should. Probably the pick of the litter. AS Monaco versus Arsenal. Monaco attacking left to right and trying to strike early here with a lovely oh. early chance off the outside of the post. Sean Kevin Augustine, I believe that was, with an attempt on goal within the first three minutes of the match. A very, very early start from Monaco. You're expecting that of them reigning champions coming into it with that, uh, that confidence. You're looking at that. Now, the interesting thing you might see on your screens here, Arsenal playing with a fluid formation. So essentially with a fluid formation, you can switch formations without having to stop the game. So you're, you can change it to a defensive mode, you change it to an attacking mode. That might prove the difference. Nicola Pepe on this right-hand side, such a prolific dribbler. Here is Aubameyang, Lacazette, great shots, 1-0. Oh. Lo and behold, first five minutes of the game, Arsenal, a favourite of competitive Pez players. And in the eFootball Pro, they strike first against the reigning champions. 1-0. Well, you, you, heard, you may have heard it on your screens at home. It was that emotional heartbeat, Venom. And like you said, they're small little mistake from the defender. But at this level, those small little mistakes, you don't need much else uh, to really punish your opponent. It was a fantastic finish from Lacazette. And, uh, you know, again, the kind of confidence for the Bamiyan to go, yep, I'll give you the ball. And Lacazette says, thank you very much. I'll pop that in the top corner. 
through the legs of the defender. Monaco will feel a little hard done by. And it's the worst start imaginable for the reigning champions. And they respond. Augustine offside. So no chance for the Monegasque club. This Maccabeel and Lotfi, of course, reigning champions. They won the eFootball Pro 2019. Joined by Kilju. And we spoke earlier about Boa Vista's baptism by fire. This certainly is uh, straight into the deep end for the Frenchman. Boarding just 2002. Very, very young, and he has to perform immediately. And there will be so much pressure on his shoulders and so many eyes watching him joining this once dominant AS Monaco team. Ten minutes gone, though. Not too much to read into so far, apart from that first goal from Arsenal. And obviously the Arsenal squad have the, the absolute luxury of having both Aubameyang and Lacazette, two ball-playing finishers up front. So chance now for Monaco. Slimani is tackled by holding in the end. And cleared up the pitch by Christopher. Yeah, I mean, looking at Suleimani, you can see there quite early on, it, it, he's their kind of focal point. He's their kind of Koulibaly to uh, to uh, to them. It's the same way that uh, Koulibaly is to Nantes. So it's, you know, you can see the way they're going, but Pepe has got buckets of pace going down that wing. Look at and that again, speed. Oh, lovely bit of skill to go around him from, uh, from Alex there. And uh, yeah, these guys looking like they're right at home playing as Arsenal. Snackabeel plays inside. Kills you to the lot feet. Kuzu, only shot. That will be dreadfully gobbled up by Bert Leno. And a chance now to play out. And like how the Arsenal boys are, are using Pepe on this right hand side. We spoke about his, his dribbling prowess, his pace as well. He's going to be a danger man that Monaco need to look out for. Here is Gil Diaz. Learning Slimani, Augustine to Balde. Oh, Leno, first time gets the save done, but second time round, too much to ask for. And Monaco are oh, right back in this time. And that's the quality that Monaco possess. It's not just the case that they go 1 0 down and that's it, game over. Monaco have that ability to go right. We can get back into this. And to be fair, it was a great manual save, but the ball just very kindly popped up. And, uh, and it was tucked away there. You can see Silamani trying to uh, G up the players. But you can see here, it was great little bits of play here. Gil Diaz into Silamani. It's a good little go between there. It's a lovely ball in there. It was a great save uh, to give it its credit. But again, if it's going to pop up kindly to you, you're going to stick it away from there. Got to push it out of the danger zone. Lovely ball, but a tremendous run here as well. From Lotfi, I believe it was. A save from Leno, unfortunately provides it on a plate for the second bite of the cherry. One thing I love about watching that man on screen is McAbeel is it doesn't matter if he's scored or if he's conceded. He's he's always passionate. He's always barking instructions and, and wondering what his team can do better. Yeah, was McAbeel never short of an emotion when he's playing uh, Pez. Um, as you can see there, oh, looks like he's going to break again. Oh, Mavropanos got very lucky there. Yeah, well very done. lucky indeed. Well done in the end by Mavropanos. Pepe on this right-hand side to Aubameyang. See what he can conjure up. Maybe a little unfortunate to lose the ball there. Lucas Torreira finds his teammate Pepe. Lacazette trying to find Aubameyang. Nothing doing there. Slimani. Keita Balde. Absolutely wonderful turn away from Chambers. John Augustine in the middle. Tackled out by Chambers. We've seen a lot of that today. We've seen a lot of driving down the line and rather than having a cross going instead of trying to pass it in you know I, I'm, you know with a weapon like Soleimani in the box you've got to think actually we can chuck it in there and give it a go Gil Diaz finds Soleimani lovely chance speaking of Devley Shalapia second goal AS Monaco despite the rocky start they bounce into a lead after being 1-0 down they showed their class there and as we said no sooner were we talking about using Soleimani as a, as a weapon. He's there to, to stick it away to make it 2-1. Again, really good bit of play to build up. Again, you can see that nice little crisp pass. And nice little 1-2. And again, Gil Diaz, lovely ball inside there. And Soleimani picks his spot. 
has all the time in the world. Just outside the penalty marker. You'll see it here, maybe sliding in a little bit too early. And like you said, picks his spot, make no mistake. It's that risk and reward where if you dive in too early and you think you know where the ball's going to be, you can sometimes really cause yourself an issue by having a player out of position and that's quietly what happened to, uh, to Arsenal there. Eight French League titles, that's eight for the Monegasque club as recently as the 2016-17 season. Being runners-up just a year later. They lead now against the Gunners. What have they got in store for us? Leaving the ball there in midfield, and oh, Augustine's through. Could this be three? Oh, you bet your oh, bottom door up. Three to the good. Secret handshakes, hand slaps all round. <laughs> the Monegasques, they are up 3-1. But it's like we spoke about in the beginning. People will point to this Monaco side and go, well, it's just just like a bio. This here is showing that actually Kilzu, who is having a very good start to his uh, eFootball pro career, not to mention that Lofi is chipping in as he did last season. So there is more to be said about this Monaco team than just its captain. There's way more about them. I mean, it's a great finish. Again, lovely little bit of heading. It was a great vision to see that through ball on. I believe that was uh, Mustafi that was playing him on side there, and Augustine just again tucks it away and it's very very easy when you get to that level with that type of goal very easy the secret hand slaps <laughs> the secret handshake lovely bit of chemistry and if you were wondering why we thought this match in particular would be a cracker you now know why four goals within 40 minutes a chance for it to be five but Aubameyang muscled off the ball Slimani knocks it down to Keita Chambers should get there first, though, and you're absolutely right. Kills you has had a field day so far for AS Monaco, loving life in the red and white strip. A chance now to attack once again. Here's Lotfi on the ball with Keita, looking for kills you. It's like a deal on the ball. Kills you making a nice run, but pulled well in the end by Venom. Steadies the ship with Torreira, and now a chance to build with the. Uh, absolutely emphatic player that is Christopher PW. Here he is again, the captain. Ball by Bamiyang. Lovely bit of skill as well to control it by Pepe. Might just roll out for a throw in. Nope, played back to Pepe, and this is wonderful. Bamiyang can't quite get it into the danger area. And with half time rapidly approaching, Monaco will certainly be the benefactors of some tremendous attacking play yeah I mean you're looking at it, they've, they've really taken control left their early knock from Arsenal which to be fair I can't even say it was against the run of play because Arsenal really started positively it was that kind of equalising goal that I think has then gifted it back to Monaco it's provided that little bit of doubt for Arsenal where all of a sudden now they're defensively looking a little bit frailer they're looking like they're kind of suffering at the back and it looks as though Monaco are finding the answer to everything that Arsenal have got and if those of you at home are wondering maybe why a player like Kilju has found his way onto this AS Monaco team, the reigning champions, don't forget, of the Football Pro, was the European Co-op champion in PES 2019, with Manchester United player Cams fielding just two players in a three versus three competition. Unheard of, everyone wrote them off, but they somehow qualify for the World Finals back in place in 2019. So perhaps unsurprising to those in the know as to why this young man has found himself on such a successful team in the eFootball Pro. Starting the half lively as AS Monaco. Slimani looking for Keita has found him. Yoko first time to Gilles Diaz. That would have been absolutely tremendous. Nothing doing. The Arsenal defence holding true. And if they go three down, these three points might just slip away from them quickly, and I think they realise that as some changes will now come in. Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously that's 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 a pretty early time to be making a change as well. There's a lot of the game left to go. There's a lot of time, and there's a lot of there's a lot of ball playing left to be played here. As we see Soleimani breaks three to Balde, puts it across for Augustine. Oh, it's in from Augustine. That's superb, superb from the Frenchman. A wonderful build-up play from Monaco, that was. Far too simple and far too easy. Arsenal's defence parting like the Red Sea. The 
see the discussions post-mortem almost midway through the game happening on the Arsenal side but Monaco will be all smiles too too simple to find that man in the middle Lotfi I think it was striking a dagger through the heart we'll see it again kills you on a plate and in the end Leno maybe could have done better but might have seen it a little bit too late well Sir Mane providing that great option as a striker he can come deep and take the ball to feet or he can go long and be your physical presence and again with the likes of Katia Balde and with Augustine running off them a very very prominent and very very potent strike force that Monaco have got this year it's realistically it's only going to spell trouble for the rest of them the uh, the eFootball Pro that these guys are, are performing at this level so early on in the league the Rouge en Blanc the red and white up 4-2-1 and look good to secure all three points but we know how fickle pairs can be sometimes so there is still time for Arsenal to fashion a comeback they can't keep losing the ball though because every time Monaco come forward they look like fashioning a chance kills you with the attempted shot blocked off in the end Venom getting it clear Nicola Pepe finds Lacazette Bamiyang waiting in the middle oh, just wasn't ready for the 1-2 the or maybe Monaco just was a little bit too quick to the punch Shield Diaz making a, a run in front of Slimani here is almost was Shield Diaz Ooh, oh, dangerous there off of Augustine they get a 4-1 that's probably not something you want to be doing against the strong force of Monaco certainly not here is Jean-Kevin Augustine Oh, right just keeps side. coming back for, for, from, from Monaco, it just keeps, it's it's relentless. You could argue maybe Arsenal got not getting the rub of the green so far in this game number one, but that would be, I think, taking credit away from AS Monaco because every single time they get the ball, they look like fashioning a chance. Here is Augustine, who's been <coughs> truly deadly. That lovely piece of skill there from Bakayoko, not seen in the same light as me from the referee. Will it the benefactor? Aldo will scoop that one clear and Willick will retain possession for the Gunners for just a moment. Augustine doing so well to find Gilles Diaz. Here is Slimani. Keita Balde. Tackle, but Slimani's there to pick up the pieces. Here is Bakayoko. Ball sliding everywhere. Finally, Arsenal get it away from the danger area, but time running out. They need a goal pretty soon here, Wes. Yeah, I think, I think it, you know, unless it comes soon, is like a set carried away but you've got to be looking at this and, and really you know looking at the the, the defense of Monaco I mean I think it I think really it's been their defense has just led from the front their best form of defense has been attack you know you look at their back line they've got two very unfashionable center halves in Naldo uh, and in, in Glick uh, who two regular players of Pez they're not your first names on the team sheet but when it comes to stat balancing and uniform stats they become physical monsters to get past in the same way that Sane was for, for Schalke it's they know how to utilize this team in Monaco and it's, it's really coming to the fore right now just about approaching the 70th minute in game Arsenal at this point probably looking at damage limitation but Monaco I, I mean I'm looking at Lotfi Kildeju and Ismakabil I, I think they're sniffing the performance bonuses at this point <laughs> they want to be the top scorers of the week they want to be the MVP they want every single title available as changes will finally come through we'll see what Arsenal have to show for that break I guess that coming off that's an interesting one yeah I mean you know again we look at you know you look at stat balancing and you look at these players you kind of go well they must be seeing something that you know us on the outside don't I mean you look at Monaco they've brought on Gelson Martins who was a you know, in terms of players you could bring off the bench, in terms of the pace he has, he, he has you know, if you got that against a tired defence, see the back heels coming out here at the moment, you can look at these players and go, well, these players are, are brilliant. Yeah, the same goes for Pellegri, who's come on for, for, for Monaco. And, you know, you're looking at this and going, well, these are these players that are, you know, they're unfashionable to many Pez players, but in this sort of scenario, they're, they're, they're vital. Martinelli onto the pitch here, wrestled to the floor by Bachayil. And that one will be going towards Arsenal and 
For me, uh, I think at this point Arsenal may be just experimenting for match number two. Don't forget, don't play an aggregate score across these two games. It's three points for a win in each, one point for a draw. Monaco looking for their fifth goal, Pellegri to Slimani. Slimani making a tremendous run again. It falls to Pellegri. Doesn't fall kindly enough. Kyoko trying to head it on. This is very sloppy by Monaco stand. Slimani pokes it through to Pellegri. Looking for Gelson Martins. Oh, that's a venomous shot. Not on target, though. Yeah, you can see there that the tired legs of Arsenal now kind of creeping in. Obviously, Pellegri coming into the fray. Gelson Martins, yeah, he could have done better with that, but... You know, given the proximity of the, the nearest Arsenal defender, he's got the best shot off that he could there, really. But looking at this, there's, what, eight minutes left of in-game? So obviously, it, we, as we mentioned earlier, it takes a, a second score of goal, but I can't see this going anywhere other than a Monaco win. But it'll be interesting to see what happens game two. Will we see a formation change? Will we see a personnel change? You know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how Arsenal exactly bounce back from this. And Doozy, very sloppy tackle there. I think it's important that we see Arsenal really mentally reset going into game two. When I look at that roster as Monaco whipped the ball in, it's only punched away. Gerson Martins can keep this one alive. I, I, I honestly see uh, maybe some mental fragility on the Arsenal side. This is a very interesting affair here. Slimani maybe trying to be the benefactor of it. Pinballing everywhere. all around, Slimani. Well, it's that's a horror goal to concede if you're Arsenal, but Lotfi and the boys, that will be their fifth. 5-1 this game surely will end. And Monaco have put Arsenal to the sword. Well, it's all about clearing your lines, isn't it? I mean, granted, there was a lot of ricochets, there was a lot of, a lot of dawdling on the ball. Sometimes you just need to clear it. You know, you look at that there, it's it's a clearance straight to your own defender. It's a lot of pinball, and the beneficiary of it, again, is Suleimani, who uh, has been a thorn in this Arsenal defence all game today. Let's call a spade a spade. That is not the prettiest goal you will see. No. <laughs> no, it's in any not. football game. It's the real Sunday League stuff, but Monaco won't care. Look at what that means. They are starting how they ended last season. Like I said, you don't want to see smiling Pez players because that means bad news for everybody. I was going to make the comment that before even that goal, if you were looking at the body language of the Monaco players, you couldn't tell whether they were winning or losing. Um, certainly from that, when they've, they've celebrated, you could tell that they're definitely yeah. winning. <laughs> Absolutely. One last throw of the dice, maybe, for Arsenal. Nicola Pepe almost got through. A judge to be offside, though, as he ran back. And... Monaco, no doubt, will be finishing this game with five to their name. Might they try and make it six? We'll have to see. There is still time. Four minutes added on. Jemison, though, smartly playing it back over to the goalkeeper. Time ticking down, though. Leno pressured, has to clear it. And at this point, I think most of the players on the stage looking at game number two in this tie. Melt Martins, though, excuse me, finds Pellegri. Oh, Slimani's there as well. And just as I say, they're looking at game number two. Monaco, they find themselves a six. It's the youngster again. It's Kilzu again. Um, I believe looking at the stats, he's, he's MVP of this game. I, he's had a brilliant start. I mean, to be in the company of who he's in with is, is comfortable enough. But to show that you're at that level, to show that you're alongside them, is brilliant to see. Truly stepping up to the plate here. Kuzu initially playing it through to his Maccabeel, and then actually two different players. They had Pellegrini there as well. They were queuing up. They were snapping at the bit for the chance at this goal. In the end, it is Kilju, it is Slimani, it is Sit. One in game number one. A nightmare start for Arsenal. And they absolutely feel that way as well. As I believe in the background that will be the full-time whistle. 
AS Monaco, the reigning champions, really asserting their dominance in game number one. 6 1. Yeah, I mean, Suleimani walks off with a match ball. It, I don't think he had too many of those when he was uh, playing in England, but I tell you what, he's, he's certainly come to the floor today. I mean, and you look at it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a demolition. But all of it could change in game two. The fact that there's, there's no tie element to this now, so, you know. You'd be looking at this last season and going, oh, well, okay, well, at least they can get a point back. There's still three points on the line. Arsenal, like you said, they need to mentally reset here. They need to get out of that mindset of we've just been hammered and destroyed. We need to kind of get back to, to kind of winning ways. And if, if that does promote a different formation, a different set of game plans, as we know, Christopher, uh, being the captain of Arsenal, has a, has a formation and a game plan for all situations. So you've got to think he'll have something in his, in his basket of tricks that Alex and uh, Venom will be able to adopt. I've got to ask you, and, and I might be putting you on the spot here a little bit, because when I look at the complexion of the Arsenal FC team, Alex, GRD, Christopher and Venom, it seems like a lot of contrasting play styles trying to fit into one unit. Is that is that how you see it as well, or do you think Christopher is is trying to install a, a mentality for the others to follow in this team? I think it, I think with any new makeup of a team, and we've seen it earlier on today, with any new players that are coming in, obviously this is a completely fresh team. It may take that game week or two. You know, they've they've not had you know this experience. Well, in, in Venom's case, he's not had this experience before. With Alex and with Christopher, they've not played with Arsenal before. It's going to take that little bit of time, you know, and it all goes down to preparation. You know, if you are preparing in between uh, match days, if you're preparing before the first match day, you need to figure out what is your kind of your best points for Arsenal. And, you, you know, you've got the pace of Pepe. They look really good at the start of the game. I just, it was the it was the composure and the mentality of Monaco that really kind of jumped them off course. And I think if they can stick to those, uh, and I keep alluding to attacking weaponry, if you are sticking to those weapons of Pepe, Aubameyang, Lacazette, and if you were employing different players around here, so if you look there, they've got Maitland-Niles on the left wing. You're looking there, you're looking at Mavropanos and holding at the back. Is that the right combination you want at the back? Do you not want Socrates? Do you not want these other players? It's 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 fascinating to see what changes are here. And, and like I said for the for the for the Monaco team, I mean the, the teams makeup are vastly similar. They play with four centre backs, that means that your players don't go forward. But if you look at their two centre backs, very unfashionable, but in stat balancing mode, it makes all the difference to have physical players. And Naldo, you're not shaking him off the ball, and Glick, you're not shaking him off the ball. So with the Bamiang and with Lacassette, they're going to need to find out a way to get around it rather than going through them. They need to go around them. I think they might have just been listening to you there, Wes. They were uh, <laughs> checking out the statistics of Mavropanos here in this stat balance mode. Well, it's just it's 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 a bit of it's a bit of common sense to look at it and go, okay, well, what didn't work last time? We were getting caught out by, you know, different players. We were getting caught out by uh, Silamani's physicality. That was the main focus. And with Balde and with Augustine running off them, you've got pace. So if that knockdown comes down, you have to be prepared. And I don't know whether that Arsenal defence was prepared for it. Well, the Monegasques win match number one between these two sides 6-1 it was a five goal margin and despite conceding first they were able to score six without response as we spoke about in game number one it's going to be all about that mental reset it's going to be all about that mental fortitude we're really going to see now what Arsenal have in the locker it will be game number two between Monaco and Arsenal, Monaco attacking from left to right, straight away, looking for Augustine, here's Keita. The pass across very swiftly and smartly, puts it away for a corner, but Monaco definitely starting the way that they left out game Yeah, they've, one. they've just picked it up where they left off, it's that, it's that confidence, we you know, heard it in the, uh, the live line, oh, it's you know, you, you, they alluded to it in their, in their pre-match interviews. We're here to win the title again. We're here to do back-to-back. -back. It's that type of confidence that realistically is going to carry them. I don't okay. think there's been a more confident team that have walked in, or at least not that we've seen yet. Certainly not. Monaco really wants to stamp their names on this competition. We are, of course, only in match day in number one. This is their first game played, but 6-1 emphatic and we can see how that shape shaked up the uh, goals tally I mean Lotfi with four out of the six that's 
I suppose you could say thanks to his teammates setting them up and putting them on a plate for him, but Lotfi is such a clinical finisher. If you give him any kind of half chance, he's going to at least make the keeper work. Yeah, 100%. If you, if you give any of these players that we're seeing today, if you give any of them half a chance, especially in the scenarios they've been getting themselves into, they're going to they're score. There is no, there's no doubt about some of these some of these players that they, they will have that confidence to score. Here's a Bamiyang into Lacazette. Lacazette shoots. It's defected wide by Naldo for a corner. What a strike it was in the end. See it again here. And I was very surprised to see them take off Lacazette in game week one. Starting with him again here in game two. Lofted in to oh, Maitland. There he Miles. Is. And out of absolutely nothing, Arsenal draw first blood once again. It was a corner that broke the deadlock. And they find themselves up 1-0 against Monaco. Well, again, it's a, it's a bit of a repeat of, of last game. We saw them go in front. I hope not that we don't see six goals again. I'd like to see us have a bit more of a balanced game, but <laughs> you can certainly say at the corner, Monaco switched off a little bit. They get a little bit lucky with Maitland Lines. Te tees himself up, keeper comes out, tries to make himself big. And Maitland Niles finds the gap where the keeper's left behind. I must admit, this caught even me off guard. Maitland Niles with the wonderful touch to, to tee up the header with his right foot. And one can know there's nothing they can do about that. And Maitland Niles has that kind of control. He's a very tough cookie to beat. Slimani making a run in behind straight off the restart. But Arsenal now have a chance to right the wrongs with the last game. After scoring first, they then shipped six they can't do that again here in game two here is Maitland Niles all the way back to Bert Leno all the way back to Maitland Niles not do a little one two I suppose you could say Jemison though will grab the ball with Torreira this is a little bit sloppy a little bit rushed maybe from Arsenal and that could lead to possession turning over rush from both sides honestly the Niles that was Venom who played the pass to Aubameyang, Christopher controlling him, but kills you. The young addition to this AS Monaco team, cleaning up. Torreira. Nico Niles finds Pepe on this right-hand side. They had a lot of success in game one with this man. Aubameyang now. Lovely bit of skill, wrestled off though. And cleared by Lotfi. Now a chance for a counter. What can they make of this? Augustine. Poor pass. Very rare for Monaco. It was so clinical in game one. It looks a little bit sloppy so here so far here in this first half. I think what? Arsenal, what? Arsenal seem, seem to have smartened themselves up a bit. They seem to be playing a little bit more defensive. They seem to be taking that pragmatic approach. They seem to be playing with the weapons and the and utilizing the formations that they've got. You can kind of see portions of the game where Christopher's kind of trademark possession game is starting to kind of creep out a little bit. Maybe his teammates are starting to adopt that philosophy. Um, obviously, it's going to be interesting to see whether they can repel this Monaco attack because Soleimani, as we can see, is a focal point and he's always going to be a problem. Oh, that's fortunate. Bakayoko, Soleimani once again, Augustine. Oh, it's Justin. I thought for a moment there might be a miraculous, miraculous weird goal line thing that happened but Monaco had a man there to poke it in anyway and they will tie up this match beautiful interplay but once again it all comes from a mistake from Arsenal they keep giving these balls away chances to clear but in the end Monaco will always make that one count and it's, it's a little it's ricochet a it was a little ricochet from Arsenal and as, as we keep saying you know, it's going it's going through Suleimani. I sometimes think that our commentary needs to be about 20 seconds behind <laughs> because we always seem to be going, oh, Suleimani's on the ball, and no sooner as that, he's then assisted a goal. And, you know, again, for the guys to keep their mentality in these situations, they, you know, we, we hear Klopp always mention about, uh, you know, mentality monsters. This is exactly what we've got here in this Monaco team. I don't think anything really phases them. I think a contributing factor towards that is the fact that they know they can score goals. Something we spoke about before the match here is Keita, covering by Socrates. They know they have goals in them, this AS Monaco team. They are so, so clinical. And it's as I said before, I don't remember the last time I watched Lotfi and this Maccabeel and 
I saw them come away with zero goals. But well, they're not known for their goalless draws. Certainly not. Bamiang and Lacazette chasing, but smartly cleared up the pitch. Will Diaz now to Keita Balde. Slimani has been a catalyst for Monaco. Can't quite get the job done there, though. Nicola Pepe finds Torreira, who finds a searching ball all the way to Maitland-Niles. This might come for Lacazette, but Maitland-Niles retrieves. Lacazette has a lot of space here. Goes for a shot. That's quite surprising. Well, we've seen a lot of feints that have started to come through where the ball kind of goes through the, uh, through the player's legs. We've seen a little bit of the skill moves kind of creeping in. Arsenal are trying to do stuff differently, which I suppose you can credit them for, for the fact that, you know, they, they've identified that it wasn't working the first, the first game, and, and now they're really trying to change it around in the second. That's a lovely ball. Sprays it out wide to make the Nars. Beats Naldo. Is that, is that waiting? Excuse me. John Kevin Augustine finds Bakayoko. A chance for Monaco to counter. So Diaz will retrieve the ball. Okay, to Balde. Pressure from Arsenal will actually lead to a free kick in the end. So pressure still on the Arsenal box, but this is certainly much better from Arsenal that we're seeing so far in this game too. I mean, they haven't conceded six so far, so that's obviously a good sign for them. But they will be ending this half with Marnie attacking their box. Keita Balde retrieves. Slimani again, he's been such a, uh, a talisman this AS Monaco attack Maitland-Niles trying to feed it through to Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang all out wide now to Pepe, bit of an ambitious one that maybe a bit of miscommunication kills you with the block an updated assist leaderboard for you is McAbeal far and away the assist leader of the league so far we're only on match day one match number three but he has five to his name already. But well, you talk about the combination play between Monaco's players. I mean, that, as we spoke about with uh, Lotfi leading the goal scoring, directly feeds into as Biles' assists. So it's 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 all about whether you can put those chances away that your your you know, your co-op partners are, are putting in for you. Um, so Abamyang dribbles it in, pull away. Still on here though for Willock. That's a lucky Just break. Get through here to make the Niles like is it? It's going to be the co-keeper who has that one covered. But yeah, it is a, a wonderful economy when you're looking at those performance bonuses, assists, goals, MVPs. The team are scoring lots of goals as Monaco are. Yep. Those come in bunches. Kills you, I suppose you could say, training behind a little bit in those categories. But, I mean, it's hard to keep up with these two world-class players. Here is a Bamiang, though, for Arsenal. Make the Niles. Finding oh. Yang again, that is a lovely ball, just, well, I say just, about a yard offside. Would have been nice if he had kept level, but a bit of a let off there for AS Monaco as they will retrieve possession. I think, I think to break the deadlock here, I think it's going to take a, a, a piece of individual brilliance, whether it be a dummy, whether it be a feint, just to open up that small pocket of space to get a shot off. Um, there's opportunities there for both teams, it's, it's just who takes them first. So too, just looking at the way Monaco like to defend. I'll come back to that point actually as they're fashioning an attack, but when the ball is hoofed up the pitch, they do like to bring their two centre backs quite quite deep, I suppose, to the ball. Quite up close. So there could be space in behind for runners. That's what they're looking for with Nicola Pepe. Venom there trying to make the overlap happen and the changes will now start to trickle in. 60 minutes odd, 57th minute, I suppose you can say 58th minute. Um, any particular changes you want to see here? I mean, uh, they're straight back into the restart, but if you were on either of these sides, what would, what would you change? Would you, would you keep going or would you would you twist? Well, I think Monaco know, Monaco, as we as we alluded to, Monaco know that, one, they can score goals with the team they have. They have a focal point. They know how to use him. I still think with Arsenal, I think they're experimenting on exactly what is the best course of action. Granted, I wouldn't like to see some of their front line come off because they are causing them issues when they get the ball at the pitch, as we can see Monaco are doing here as well. Oh, Sila. Through to Silla. Lovely. It's a fantastic finish. Absolutely wonderful. The left foot on the left side was all that was needed. And Monaco are feeling like it's deja vu after the first game. Despite conceding first, they now lead 
Arsenal FC. And that was a wonderful, wonderful goal. Yeah, I mean, you, if you looked at the way this comes out, it looks as though it's going to go to the big man Soleimani again, but Silla just sneaks into the back post. He's completely unmarked. And it's a great near post finish. If you're a goalkeeper, you're not wanting to concede at your near post. Leno would have been disappointed with that. There wasn't any manual keeping it. He does actually get a hand to it as well. He's really going to be disappointed with that. Uh, and the Arsenal boys, they will, they will no doubt be disappointed that they've gone 2-1 behind here. But again, it's going to be about how, how much is your mentality going to be affected here? Can you throw subs on? We're only 60 minutes in. We're seeing the game plan there very briefly. But you can see there, changes are being made. And they're being... The, 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 the interesting thing about these is whenever the substitutions between game one and game two, they're always the same situations, they're always the same times, they're always the same substitutions. So these teams know their teams inside out and they know what they need to bring on and what they don't. They know how they want to play. But Leno pushing it into his own net. Had to try and get a hand on it, but unfortunately that hand pushes it into the top corner. So work for Arsenal to do. We'll see the changes they've made and see if they make a difference, but they have to very wary to not open the dam that is AS Monaco goals. Here is Augustine, kills you, Sila. Oh, wonderful. Is it still alive? Not quite, as Arsenal scramble it clear, but very dangerous. Again, they don't want to be shipping too many goals. Otherwise, this one could get out of hand very quickly. Torreira chasing the ball, but oh, wonderful work for the Monaco man, and that's going to completely change the tide of the attack. Augustine to Sila. Oh, it's a Lovely. great finish. Absolutely lovely. That's how you counter. That is how you put pressure on from an opponent's mistake. And that is how you play if you are AS Monaco. Wonderful back-to-front goal. Well, it's like we talked about. They fashioned the space. They fashioned that space. Silla had the, the, the smallest opportunity to take the shot. And they took it. I mean, it was great pressure here as well. Gildias, Soleimani at the heart of it again. Augustine finding the side. And it was the tiniest bit. He couldn't go across goal because there's two defenders. You have to go near post. And again, keepers found lacking. If you look here, there's not that much space. And he's found the gap again. So, so direct. From winning the ball to back of the net, just three passes. And this Monaco squad, absolutely wonderful. Second goal for Moussa Sia, the Frenchman of AS Monaco. They have found a star in him. Here is... Slimani as Arsenal off the restart give the ball away straight away maybe the heads have started to go there are still 20 in-game minutes for this one to turn around Augustine looking for Slimani blocked off though and now it's time for Arsenal to have a little bit of a sense of urgency as we see Saka trying to get this to Aubameyang looks like Lacazette again substituted for Arsenal Pepe in the box but that one will never get through to him too many bodies in the way Socrates covering Slimani there and it's going to be tough here for Arsenal. They have a uphill struggle. And they need the next goal. AS Monaco still applying the pressure. Augustine, Gelson Martins, Sia, the two goal scorer, the brace owner and now a free kick in a very dangerous area to AS Monaco. It's, it's really tricky, and I, I think, as we're seeing here, the formation change, uh, it has to come in. Yeah, I mean, like we say, we can see there they're pushing on with, with Pepe. You can see the Willocks moving up. I don't know whether that's enough. They're bringing on... Re uh, well, it looks like they're trying to... They're, they're making an additional substitution. They're bringing on Meza Ozil. No free kick take it. If they get some set pieces, it might be worth doing. And as we can see there from this this uh, possession, or the, uh, the flu formation there, basically, when they're out of possession, they're playing 4-4-2. And they're playing a diamond, so they're, they're kind of sinking back into a formation when they've not got the ball. For me, that formation is too open because these guys are exploiting this space and they're exploiting like that, that, that mechanism. Um, See that with the free kick, left-footed. Oh, but Leno across. Christopher there with the manual goalkeeping with the save. Otherwise, that one was going top bins and that would have been game set. And six points for Monaco. Ball whipped in, I think doing. Nelson Martins finds Slimani. Oh, tried to catch Leno off guard there with a quick shot, but German is very wary to it. And now's the time for Arsenal to strike. Still unable to string together a couple of passes. That's a rare mistake. They need to 
be the benefactors of this. Pepe in the middle. Aubameyang's trying to make a run. Oh, it's just too powerful. Not direct enough. And that will be the Monaco goalkeeper gladly gathering that one. Time running down. 83rd minute approaching. Pepe. Again, just nothing doing here. And that's a rare mistake. Simani almost pouncing on that one. Socrates across to cover and send it back to the keeper. But Arsenal, they don't have time for this. No, they need to get this one up the pitch. But look at this relentless pressure. Yes, it's a foul given away by Uzmak Abil despite getting the ball in that challenge. That will reset his Monaco team, stop any runs in behind. And this is all Arsenal can do. Aubameyang, though, finds his way through to him. Here's Pepe! Tipped away for 3-2. 3-2! There is life in this tie just yet. Maybe a point on the horizon for Arsenal. Perhaps a little fortuitous in the goal, but they won't care. They are within one now of Monaco. Well, it, it broke down. It was it was as rude one as you can get. Aubameyang challenges for it. Pepe mops up. It's a, it's a great finish as well, especially on the angle. Those shots are quite hard to pull off uh, in eFootball Pest 2020, and that is no different. You know, to find the corner, nearly hits the post on the way in. You know, hits the side netting and it still manages to creep in. There's a small glimmer of hope here for that Arsenal team and they'll be latching onto it. They need to. Such fine margins here in the eFootball Pro. And Arsenal, will we be seeing some 90th minute magic? Naldo, Rusty one back to the keeper. He will take his time getting up and pushing this one up the pitch. Four minutes added on. Monaco have a chance to attack. Maybe they just get this one to the corner to secure the three points, which would translate into six points. Staffy, he has to do that. Two minutes gone of the four added. And the dream might just be gone now for Arsenal. Can they whip this one in? The left footed option is here. It is Musa Sia. I think they're going to go short here. Yep. Unsurprising. Thought they might just try for a fourth goal, but that would have been very dangerous. Do have the throw in though. Just need to tick the time away in the Arsenal final third. Pressure has to come in straight away here from Arsenal. Although Monaco are going to blast this one all the way back. Tick away the final minute. Nearly got caught out there, there. Almost did, but that will be another win on the board for AS Monaco. After winning the first match, 6-1. Had a bit of a tougher time of it in match number two. They will come away with the six points after winning match two, 3-2. Three to two. Great games, great commentary as well from Harry and Weser there. And it is AS Monaco who are triumphant. And uh, Weser, we um, were looking forward to this particular matchup. It certainly lived up to the billing. And talk about a statement of intent from Monaco. Well, it was all confidence, wasn't it? It was, it was the champions defending their crown. Basically, this is their house at the moment. They, they really, really poured it on that first game to go 6-1 against what was a, you know, they, they weren't bad players. They weren't having a bad game. It was just Monaco were just so much 